white tape with their name on it. Okay, good. Okay, great. Okay. Very much. Yeah. Oh, are there names? Okay. That was a mission. Oh, here. 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 Oh,
uh, to tackle organized uh, crime head on, to address retail crime, to hold perpetrators accountable when they commit crime, um, to protect our communities, uh, to keep our businesses safe. Um, seven bills that will make sure that California remains the best place to live, to work, to do business, to raise a family. And the only way to, to crack down on organized retail crime is to have an organized response, to uh, be more coordinated, more unified. Uh, again, that teamwork and that partnership. So this package of legislation is emblematic of that uh, partnership, that teamwork, that collaboration. These are real solutions that move the needle and address the problem. And here at, at, in my office at the California DOJ, certainly law enforcement and DAs across the state, um, the legislature, the governor, we're all committed to holding accountable bad actors, to arresting them and prosecuting them when they commit crime, when they break our laws, and to strengthening our laws and to ending organized retail crime in California as we know it and to doing it together. So um, we've heard the calls uh, from Californians for safety and for solutions, and now uh, we are making a statement uh, to those uh, who are engaged in committing crimes, hurting our communities, stealing from businesses. Um, if you commit those crimes, if you harm our businesses, if you attack our communities, we'll come for you. And this package of legislation provides for those pathways to hold those accountable who are hurting California. So very grateful for the opportunity uh, to be here, and I want to uh, take an opportunity to introduce my friend, Select Committee on Retail Crime Chair, Assemblymember Rick chavez Zibber. Good morning. Um, I'm proud to serve as a joint author, along with Speaker Rivas, for AB 2943, the California Retail Theft Reduction Act. This bill is a primary component of a broader comprehensive strategy and package of bills that advances balanced, effective, and meaningful solutions to retail crime and preserves criminal justice reforms that have been effective at keeping our communities safe. It's important to lay out the key elements of the, my bill. AB 2943 places great emphasis on stopping organized crime rings that are harming our communities by creating a new crime targeting serial retail thieves. It targets those that engage in repeated specified conduct or possess a quantity of goods inconsistent with personal use. This and other parts of the bill are key components of recommendations released by Governor Newsom's office a couple months ago, and I want to thank him, as well as Attorney General Bonta and uh, Pro Tem McGuire for their leadership on this issue. The bill also more specifically defines how the value of thefts from different victims can be aggregated to charge grand theft. Notably, the bill clarifies the law that the intent standard can be met by evidence that acts involve the same defendant are substantially similar and occur within 60-day period. AB 2943 also expands the tools for police to arrest for shoplifting and to keep repeat offenders and those committing organized retail crime in custody. And significantly, this bill helps address the root cause of theft by expanding the use of diversion and rehabilitative programs, offering an opportunity for early discharge if a program is completed. We are finalizing language on three additional elements to be added to the California Retail Theft Reduction Act. These are protecting businesses from having nuisance actions brought against them simply for reporting retail crime, addressing the role of online marketplaces, and increasing data transparency for large retailers. Widespread retail crime is not only bad for business and a source of shopper inconvenience, it is an issue of safety for workers and businesses as well as an issue of the public's perception of safety. This bill says to organize crime rings, we mean business, and we are going to give law enforcement the tools they need to shut you down. To those who are engaging in shoplifting to survive, these proposals embrace new tools like enhanced supervision and diversion programs to help people get on their feet. To the public, this bill demonstrates that the effective reform that we need is on its way. I'm grateful to the speaker for his leadership on AB 2943, and I'm grateful to all of the authors here today, as well as the speakers and the stakeholders and members of the select committee for investing in this comprehensive and meaningful set of proposals. Now I'd like to hand it over to my colleague and chair of the Assembly Public Safety Committee, Assembly Member McCarty. Thank you. Good morning. I'm proud to be here as an assembly member, part of this package, but as the chair of the Public Safety Committee, uh, thank you to our speaker for, for leading us together on a bipartisan group 
our Attorney General and my middle school classmate, Rob Bonta. <laughs> Great to see you again in this role. Um, you know, today is about answering the call. As the Speaker uh, said this past fall, we, we uh, chose to have a select committee to investigate this. He asked me to chair the Public Safety Committee, and he says we need to bring about more balance and accountability without fully turning back the clock. Uh, so today, this morning, we are talking, and later today, more importantly, we are acting and voting on seven measures plus five or so more to bring about real answers and accountability to our public safety challenges. Uh, we have a wide-ranging uh, menu of options before us today. We, we have tools for retailers, for uh, frontline law enforcement, from police and sheriffs to our district attorneys to more effectively uh, bring about accountability, again, without fully reversing and turning back the clock. You know, as far as uh, my measure, uh, AB 1794, it's a companion measure along with our speaker and uh, Mr. Zaber's measure focusing on aggregation, on people who focus on multiple venues, um, multiple victims, bringing about more tools for law enforcement to hold individuals accountable. Plus, we're, we're expanding an effort started right here in my adjacent county in Yolo County, the Fast Pass program, allowing retailers to go directly to the district attorneys without um, the police involvement to bring about swifter action and accountability. And lastly, we'll bring about more resources from our state growth pr program to help DAs implement these efforts. Uh, with that, I want to now bring up our uh, colleague in the assembly. I think it's really important that he's here, uh, not only because he's a former uh, law enforcement officer with the Sheriff's Department of Stanislaus County, um, he is uh, vice chair of our public safety committee and a Republican. We want to make sure that our answer to these issues is bipartisan. We need to make sure we don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And with us today are multiple solutions to that. And I'm proud to introduce Assemblymember Juan Alanis. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Speaker. Um, obviously, Attorney General, thank you for being here as well. Uh, so the retail theft issues we are talking about today did not appear overnight, and they're not going to be solved overnight. I'm proud to be co-authoring several bills in this package today and to be the lead author on AB 1972, which will help specifically with cargo theft. This bipartisan bill package represents a collaborative effort to address some of our state's issues with retail theft. I am proud to stand here with my colleagues today as part of this package. My bill, AB 1972, will enhance and expand the state's property crimes task force ability to combat cargo theft. If it's passed into law, it will provide meaningful results. My bill adds railroad police to the task force and allowing the CHP-led task force to move more efficiently in the efforts by adding cargo theft to investigate and have the authority and their priorities. I'm proud to have Stanislaus County District Attorney Jeff Legero over here to my right, standing up here with me today supporting AB 1972. Like AB 1972, many of these bills being presented today are positive first steps toward solving real problems California is facing. However, more work remains to be done, and I look forward to working with many colleagues on those continued efforts. We can solve many problems by working together, and I want to thank each of my colleagues behind me and besides me for working hard and collaboratively on this very important issue. As you guys know, our retailers have uh, gone many years and have been asking for the help, and I think that's what we're here to do today is to let them know that we're here, we're here today and we're here to move forward with this as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce a good friend of mine, Assemblymember Berman. Thank you, Assemblymember Alanis. Um, first, I want to thank the speaker uh, for his leadership on this issue, as well as all of my colleagues here today in law enforcement and public safety uh, who have been working with us on this package of bills. And this is really a package of bills that is, is the culmination of a lot of listening, a lot of listening to the people who are impacted, listening to small businesses, listening to retailers, listening to the workers in those stores, listening to people who shop at those stores. Um, and this is a, a common sense set of of solutions uh, to try to address the, the realities that they've been going through uh, for the past couple of years, really for longer than the past couple of years, but it's been exacerbated over the last few years. And, and in recent years, the Bay Area has experi experienced the largest increases in shoplifting rates. Uh, I was shocked to hear that San Mateo County, uh, where I live, 
had the highest rate of shoplifting in 2022, which was a 53% increase compared to 2019 rates. But this isn't just happening in the Bay Area. The rise in retail theft uh, and robbery is a growing issue throughout California, as we've heard. Theft not only hurts our businesses, but it hurts our communities. And it's important that we act now to mitigate these types of crimes. This is why I authored AB 3209, which would create a retail crime restraining order for theft, vandalism, or battery on an employee within a store. This common sense solution provides a new enforcement tool that will keep stores, customers, and workers safe while also ensuring there are sensible guardrails to ensure we're not exacerbating issues of poverty. I want to thank my colleagues again and the speaker uh, for leading these critical efforts that will create a safer California for everybody. Uh, and now it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend, Assemblymember Jackie Irwin. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Berman, and good morning, everybody. I, I would first like to echo my colleagues and thank Speaker Rivas for his leadership in putting together this package. I would also like to thank Assembly uh, Member Zabur for his hard work in the fall through his uh, Select Committee on Retail Theft and, and, um, and uh, Mr. McCarty for uh, his work uh, on the Public Safety Committee. As we've already heard today, Across California, shoppers and retailers are frustrated with the impacts of organized retail theft. Californians have had enough. Our role as a legislator, legislature is to give the law enforcement and our prosecutors the tools they need to address these sophisticated retail theft rings which operate across large regions of California. These criminals are making it harder for consumers to find the products that they want and need and they threaten their safety and the safety of workers while shopping in local businesses. This package of bills does just that, including my bill, AB 1779, which restores the efficiency and effectiveness of joining theft charges from multiple counties into a single case in a single court. This tool was key for prosecutors between 2019 and 2021, but short-sightedly sunset. The restoration of this tool to the Attorney General in 2022 was an important first step, but with more multi-county cases than the Department of Justice can effectively pursue, we must fully leverage our district attorneys who have already funded the, have already been funded in the state budget for this very important work. District attorneys like uh, my own DA from Ventura County, Eric Nasarenko, who is right behind us, He's here with us, and he is ready to get to work on multi-jurisdictional cases. And uh, with that, I would like to thank all my colleagues who have worked on this package, and I would like to turn things over to my colleague, Assemblymember Joan Sawyer. Thank you, and uh, good morning. As the first member to have an organized retail theft bill, the 1065, um, it is really great to be here. Early on, when we, when we had the organized retail theft, it was just the Attorney General and it was CHP that was working hard on this. They were the Batman and Robin in organized retail theft in making sure that we take these culprits and bring them to justice. Um, retail theft is not a new problem in California. And in fact, um, it's been a troubling and complex issue that have, I've worked hard to address during my time in the Assembly. I want to thank Governor G uh, Jerry Brown and I, when we first put this together to, to do 1065, we were both vilified by both the law enforcement and the criminal justice folk who said this would not work. We are either going to over-incarcerate or we wouldn't be able to prosecute. The Attorney General and CHP have proven that it could be done. They did it so well that the governor put over $200 million to have it go more statewide. And in fact, my bill, which is only supposed to be for a few years, got up for a few more years now. Now we have the opportunity to make it permanent because it works. In 2017, I authored 10, uh, AB 1065, which created the crime of organized retail theft. But this bill was carefully designed to specifically target organized crime rings. Middle California is worried that despite this progress, retail theft continues to grow uncontrollably. Yet 63% of California District Attorney's Office reported zero organized retail theft convictions last year. And some of the largest 
counties in the state, including Sacramento County, San Bernardino County, and Riverside County, reported single-digit organized retail theft felony convictions. By comparison, last year, the Los Angeles County District Attorney, one that's considered soft in crime, filed 367 organized retail theft cases. When the Board of State and Community Corrections opened applications for the Organized Retail Theft Prevention Grant program last year, only 32 of California's 58 counties were represented among the applic applications. That's why governor, the governor made a specific um, intent to chastise cities that do not take advantage of these funds. The largest share of applications by a landslide came from the county, L.A. County Sheriff's Department and city police uh, departments in L.A. County. We've given law enforcement the tools to fight this, and when they use these tools, they are very, very, very successful. I cannot make law enforcement and prosecutors take advantage of the work I've done, but I can assure you that they are effective when they do. This year, I've authored AB 1802 to eliminate the sunset for my original bill and make the crime of organized retail theft a permanent a tool available to those who are willing to use it. This will ensure that law enforcement and prosecutors have the necessary means to fight back against the organized crime rings that continue to disrupt life in Golden State. It is now the job of our partners in the criminal justice system to utilize the tools we've given them and tackle this issue, this issue once and for all. Today I'm, I'm proud to continue my legacy of work and cement the crime of organized uh, retail theft and eliminate it forever. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to bring up my my also colleague, uh, Assemblymember Soria. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am honored to be here this morning with this bipartisan uh, group of legislators, but also uh, with the coalition of stakeholders that are so critical um, in addressing this very important issue. And so for me, uh, this issue has been a top priority. Uh, I've also, along with many of my colleagues, have taken the time to talk to our local uh, businesses, our local law enforcement, uh, to talk about not just the issue, but what are the real solutions um, that can help begin uh, to you know, address the retail theft issues going on in areas like the Central Valley. As a member that represents the Central Valley, an area that is very underserved and um, you know, I would even say underrepresented, um, the retail issue has become very pronounced. I think just a few weeks ago, um, it shows how emboldened folks are because we're not holding people accountable. There was a, a gentleman that decided to run his truck into a Lululemon uh, store in Fresno and break through, you know, the all the glass windows and, and, and doors. And so that's the type of things that we're trying to get to, to, uh, to address and make sure that these individuals are no longer emboldened, uh, but they, they're, they're deterred because we are um, here to protect our business owners, our communities, uh, the folks that are trying to go uh, shopping at these uh, different businesses, and also the workers that are there um, every day. And I think that uh, together Together with the number of bills that are being presented this morning at the Public Safety Committee, the seven that are uh, being presented here, uh, we are making uh, going to make progress in addressing this uh, this issue. That, as was mentioned by uh, my colleague, is not just an issue of today; has been an issue uh, for many years. And um, previously, law enforcement did have some tools that allowed them to, um, you know deter or to go after those folks that are causing um, chaos in our communities, because that's what it is. Um, they are terrifying our communities, and I know uh, that in communities like mine, uh, what happens is that many times retailers, as a result, have to raise prices, and our families are already uh, challenged with the increase of cost of living, and so what we're seeing is that at the end of the day, the consumer is also being impacted. And so I'm proud to join today. Uh, thank you for uh, the work, Mr. Speaker, and your leadership in making sure that we work together in a, in a bipartisan fashion to really move California forward. And also, answering the call, I think the governor said it very clearly earlier this year that he wanted us to send him legislation so that he could sign to address this very important topic. And so I think today is proof uh, that working together 
we can bring about solutions that are going to address the retail uh, theft issue here in our community. For me, I'm presenting AB 1960, um, which is not new. It, it is a previous tool that law enforcement had, again, uh, to combat re retail retail theft and keep our community safe and so we're bringing that back so to ensure that our local DAs have the tools necessary uh, to deter folks uh, those especially that uh, create a lot of loss and damage uh, to these businesses um, starting at 50,000 uh, there will be additional penalties and again we are trying to make make sure uh, that we're sending the message to folks that we're serious and that we mean business and that we want to make sure that our communities are safe uh, not just in the future, but today. And so I want to thank uh, my colleagues for all the incredible work. Uh, the Democratic uh, Chairman, uh, Rick Saber, Assemblymember Rick Saber, for your tireless work. Um, and just proud to stand here, um, even with uh, my colleague from the Valley, um, you know, Republican member, um, Juan Alaniz. Uh, it is great uh, to work together, because I think that that's what our constituents want, uh, to bring real solutions to the table. And so all of these bills do just that. And so I want to thank everyone for the incredible work um, and for putting this event together. Oh. <laughs> Can't forget. Um, want, want to also introduce a very important stakeholder um, in you know the issue of addressing retail theft, and so I want to introduce Rachel Michelin. Uh, she represents uh, the Retailers Association, um, and President uh, Michelin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. First of all, um, thank you to all of you standing here. Wow. Um, I didn't think we would get here a couple years ago. Um, and just really, Speaker Rivas, um, I've said this before, you cracked the egg when you um, announced the Select Committee on Retail Theft. You changed the dialogue in the state of California. Thank you, Mr. Zabur, for your leadership of bringing stakeholders together across the state, those of you on the Select Committee and what you did. Uh, Mr. McCarty, you, you brought stakeholders together. You had to go to committee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. McCarty, I'll see you soon. Uh, but thank you for what you did in bringing stakeholders together. We met weekly for a while trying to find common ground on some of these solutions. And Attorney General Bonta, I know for, for almost two years you brought retailers together to have conversations with law enforcement on how we can address this issue. You know, and, and I would be remiss to not recognize Governor Newsom, who from the get-go, when it was smash and grabs, he immediately called me and said, what can we do to help the retail industry? And he, in 2021, produced his Real Public Safety Plan, investing in local law enforcement grants, vertical grants for prosecutors to help curtail retail theft in California. So we've done a lot in the state. But this package really does comprehensively give the tools in the toolbox to do what Californians are demanding, which is really curtailing retail theft in California. Our employees are asking for it. Californians are demanding it. And retailers want to be able to just sell our products. We want to deter retail theft from even coming into our stores. So I am very cautiously optimistic and look forward to working with every single one of the authors of these bills as, as they go through the process. I think this is a new day for this conversation in California, and I think that we're going to get somewhere this year. You know, we hear a lot of rhetoric that things start out in a, in a committee and it doesn't always get through in that, in that form when it gets to the governor's office. I think that's different this year. And I think there are naysayers not only in California but throughout the country that are going to see a different dialogue happening here. And I think for once, we're going to see a bipartisan package that's really going to change the narrative in the state. And I think Californians are going to be surprised that this legislature can work collaboratively with both houses, Republicans and Democrats, with our leadership in the state administrative offices, with our attorney general and our governor, to do what Californians are demanding, which is stopping retail thought crime from expanding across the state of California. So thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you for your leadership, and I look forward to our continued conversations as these bills move through the process. With that, proud to introduce my colleague, I would say my partner in crime, um, <laughs> Jennifer Barrera from the California Chamber of Commerce. <laughs>
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pl uh, pleasure to be here and a privilege to be here. I uh, want to thank the speaker for his leadership on this issue, Assemblymember Spur, uh, Assemblymember McCarty for their work on this important issue, and really all of the authors who are here today on these bills for putting in the work on such a critical issue for the business community, our chief law enforcement officers, uh, our DAs, our local law enforcement. It really is uh, quite significant to see such a uh, group of stakeholders really dealing with such a huge huge issue for California businesses, our employees, and our customers. So again, we're so pleased to be here to support this important package. And everything that has been said so far, I agree with uh, the sentiments, so I won't uh, repeat uh, everything, but I do want to just highlight a couple of um, key points that I really think are important. One, this is bipartisan, which is, again, a new conversation and shows uh, a new approach and uh, an opportunity for change on how we're dealing with uh, issues in California. The listening and the collaboration that has gone on has been really key to making sure that this is a comprehensive and effective uh, package that will give law enforcement the tools they need to address this issue in a swift and effective manner. Um, the issues going on in our communities, we have all seen it. We know that this retail theft and organized retail crime is impacting our communities. It's hurting our small businesses. It is hurting our brick and mortar stores who are having to uh, in, uh, create new uh, security measures that are costly and also change the customer experience. And we know that our customers are feeling uns safe, whether they witness the crimes in person or whether they're just seeing them uh, on TV, it does create a level of uh, uh, safety concerns for our customers and we need to change that direction. And so we are, uh, again, uh, pleased to be here to support this package. We know that some of these bills um, will still be worked on as they go through the process and we look forward to partnering with all of the authors here, the speaker um, and his leadership, and of course, the broader legislature and the governor to work on really delivering a strong package for Californians that will have an impact on this issue, so thank you. And with that, I would like to welcome Speaker Rivas back to the podium. So again, I want to uh, thank uh, my colleagues for being here, uh, for presenting on, on, on their legislation. I want to thank our stakeholders for being here as well, who we've uh, in, been uh, engaged with uh, for um, a number of months. Um, uh, but, but, but certainly, um, you know, again, I want to thank you all for your time. And, and can't emphasize enough that this is um, the first step for us. You know, we've been engaged for a number of months. We know that the legislative process uh, is a long one. And, and so our focus is on ensuring that, that we can see these bills through the finish line. Um, but the engagement will continue. Uh, and look forward to uh, working with my colleagues, working with Attorney General Rob Bonta and all of the stakeholders moving forward. Uh, and with that, um, want to um, you know, emphasize that this is a busy day. A lot of these bills uh, are being, will be presented here um, uh, now. Uh, and so I uh, would uh, you know, encourage my colleagues to head across the street to, uh, <laughs> to uh, do that work. But uh, happy to answer um, a couple of questions. Uh, uh, yes. You know, that's a great question, um, and uh, I would invite the Attorney General if he, uh, you know, um, wants to add. But, you know, I know uh, the, the, the collection of data is, is, is certainly lacking, you know, across California, especially when it comes to retail theft. And so it's been, you know, it's a part of the legislation that, that we've introduced. would invite Assemblymember Zabur if he wants to speak on that, on that aspect of the bill. Um, that bill, uh, as you know, is... Um, uh, Assembly Bill 2943. It's, uh, you know, of, 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 of the seven bills of this package, it is the most comprehensive bill. Um, it is one that we have worked very closely with the administration on. Um, they uh, have provided a lot of uh, input uh, in this specific bill, but certainly one of the aspects of that bill, again, um, is at uh, that collection of data. So, Rick, if you want to add anything. You know, there is data that shows, <clears throat> and it's mixed, admittedly. It's going down. Shoplift, petty shoplifting is going down in some neighborhoods, but it's going up in others. We know it's gone up, all the categories of crime, since the pandemic, uh, even though it's actually at a level that's probably below pre-pandemic levels. In terms of the 
providing more data. Uh, 2943 does provide new reporting obligations to large retailers so that we can actually provide better data. Um, and, and we are proposing doing that in a way so that the retailers can pr protect the proprietary information that they need to protect. So that is a component of the bill to try to have better data um, that's available to law enforcement and all the folks and, and those of us in the legislature so that we can assess this uh, issue as, as we move forward. Yeah, I'll just jump in as well here on this. Um, criminal justice data is an ongoing challenge, having comprehensive, accurate, up-to-date data. Um, we do have some data on, on retail theft, petty thefts, and, and shop, what we sort of known as shoplifting, uh, minor amounts. Um, on the state, that's, we've seen that that's gone down. Um, organized retail crime has, has certainly gone up uh, in, in a number of places. But, but even if I told you that organized retail crime in the state was going down, uh, we have seen with our own eyes and our own lived experiences the, the unacceptable, brazen, bold, organized retail crime that you just can't have in an ordered society. You can't have flash mobs going into a store and stealing, and it needs to be addressed. And making sure that law enforcement and prosecutors and community leaders and legislators have all the, the most important tools is, is critical. So um, people need to, to be safe. They need to feel safe. And making sure that we're responsive um, to California is, is critical here. And this package, I think, gets the job done. Stephen, there's um, Annabelle Sosa from the LA Times. Just a question about the ballot initiative, the deadline to submit those signatures is coming up. So I know that negotiations will potentially uh, take place. And the initiative process allows the legislature to hold a public hearing with the proponent of a ballot. I just wanted to know if you are looking into holding a public hearing. So our focus is on this package of bills. You know, obviously we'll be monitoring the progress of that initiative as it moves forward. But um, you know, our focus is is uh, on this package of bills. All seven will be heard in public safety committee. Uh, and so, as I've said, as I've maintained, you know, since the beginning of the year, you know, I believe in the legislative process. This is our um, you know opportunity in the spirit of collaboration to work together to refine a lot of these bills and ideas uh, to get good public policy. Um, and, you know, there's no turning back the clock on the criminal justice reforms that have been enacted. Uh, for us, it's understanding the root causes of this problem, which is complex. Uh, and for us, each one of these bills gets after those layers of complexity. Uh, and so excited at, at the work we have done, uh, but look forward to the work we still have to do uh, to see these bills across the finish line. So thank you all so much and look forward to engaging moving forward. Because you were quoted saying, saying, saying that you were going to 